What else can I really say about Raw this week, except for the fact, like the title to this video suggests, it was boring, dumb, and stupid. Seems like a bit of a broken record. Frankly, I probably should just stop the review now. It was boring, it was dumb, it was stupid. But I suppose, in the interest of fairness, I should at least explain why this show was boring, dumb, and stupid, as if it needs, a, frankly, a whole lot of explanation. Explanation. I I'm sorry. I really got to ask the question. How the hell could anybody think this is really good? How could anybody think that in any way this is compelling wrestling television or even sports entertainment television or television at all for that matter? I mean, to me, the way I see it is to really enjoy this means you either came into wrestling only in the last few years, so you really don't understand any better, or you've allowed the WWE to so skillfully and artfully drop your expectations so low that you're fooling yourself into thinking that this is a whole lot better than it really is, just as a justification for you to continue to watch. I mean, this shit was boring. It was dumb. It was stupid. It's not just the fact that it's three hours. It's what they do within that three-plus hours with the ten-plus minutes of overrun they had on this week's show. That, that just makes it so god-awful bad. I mean, like, for example, this is how uninteresting this show was to me. During that opening segment where they're wasting our time with a wasted Paul Heyman promo and Brock Lesnar doing this stupid apology the whole time I'm fixated on Brock Lesnar's eyeline tan line. That was the whole point of interest and emphasis to me. I'm sitting there looking at this guy. I'm like, I don't know what the hell tractor you're riding in in Minnesota. You're maybe out in the sun a little too much. I suggest maybe taking off the sunglasses so that way the tan kind of, or in this case, the sunburn kind of evens out. And all the while, his arms still look pale as shit. So you're wearing flannels out to farm? I don't know what the fuck. That was the whole thing I was focused on the first 15 minutes. As soon as I saw Brock Lesnar was his freaking tan line right there around his eyes. I know I can't be the only one. I know I can't be the only one. Uh, what else did I see? You do this little segment, pumping up Titus O'Neil, being named Celebrity Dad of the Year, and that's all fine and good. So they're there to face off against an Ascension team that didn't even get an entrance. And then Darren Young ends up getting the pinfall victory. <laughs> you know, these little types of things are just ridiculous. You've just spotlighted Titus O'Neil. You've just emphasized something really cool and really good about Titus O'Neil. Something that could really make him appealing and likable as a babyface character, of which he already has numerous characteristics to be likable, in my opinion. And he decided to give the victory to no move having, no days off, no woman loving Darren Young. Makes no fucking sense to me. Another thing I noticed uh, during Sheamus and Roman Reigns' match, as I was waiting for the pain to mercifully end, is it was another week and it was another bruiser mark on Sheamus. He had, what, a big shoulder bruise this time to go with all the other marks on the back? It's hard to even take Seamus seriously or pay a lot of attention to what he's actually doing in the ring because I always find myself fixated on all these dings and dents and scratches and bumps and bruises that he has all over his body. Uh, whatever. Uh, but then you get to the whole stupidity that is Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns. And I'm sorry, as people pointed out uh, a week ago um, when talking about Bray Wyatt, yeah, this motherfucker's character has become boring as shit. And as people pointed out in the comments section, you know, I believe it was on the Money in the Bank review, they were talking about every Bray Wyatt feud is basically the same fucking thing. And that is true. They're exactly the same fucking thing. And frankly, the feuds aren't that compelling and aren't all that particularly interesting. And, you know, I'm okay with hokey and stupid. If the hokey and stupid is done well... But hokey and stupid that is just hokey and stupid, that really has no redeeming qualities, just is stupid and hokey. And this whole crap 
of him, Bray Wyatt, pretending to have a tea party with Roman Reigns' daughter, even though knowing damn good and well that she's not freaking there, all to have Roman Reigns go running up the ramp, even though you would think he would know where his daughter is, knowing that she probably isn't there, to go back there and see this freaking stalker wall, where instead of it being pictures of his daughter, it's pictures of Roman Reigns with the eyes and mouth cut off and saying anybody but you, was just hokey and fucking stupid. And frankly, at this point in time, what else would I expect out of the Bray Wyatt character or anything involving the Bray Wyatt character that the WWE does? You've got this great character concept, and to be fair to the WWE, they have some really good character concepts, but they have absolutely no clue what the fuck to do with them. And this whole crap between Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns is just forced and contrived to give Bray Wyatt something to do, distracting from what Roman Reigns should be bothered with and should be doing at this particular point in time. And all the while, so that way, what? Bray Wyatt can talk about how he's the face of fear. The fear of what? The fear of getting your ass kicked by the next baby face to face off with you? The fuck? Get out of here. I do like how Neville is organically getting over, naturally getting over, not in a forced, not in a crammed type of way, but he's being allowed to showcase what he can do. The WWE is focusing on his strength, which is his ability to entertain people in the ring. They place a good emphasis on his finishing maneuver. All of that is fine. I just want to see them at some point in time do something with Neville that indicates to me he won't just become their new version of Evan Bourne. And in a lot of ways, that's exactly what I see is going to happen. This guy is getting over with the people organically. I'm not saying you need to give him a main event push by any stretch of the imagination. But the guy's been around since WrestleMania time. You know, maybe it's time to put him in a real feud, a real program. Give him a real story. Give us some type of insight into the Neville character. Give us some type of story, some type of backdrop, what have you. You can only sit there for so long and trot them out there for semi-entertaining, uh, buried in the middle of the show raw matches with an exciting finishing maneuver and expect that shit to work. You know, let's grow the character, let's develop the character a little bit. But of course, you wouldn't expect the WWE to do a good job of that because God knows after 10 fucking years, they still haven't figured a way to grow or change or develop the John Cena character. Yeah, I knew this bullshit was going to happen. The people got sucked in last week. Oh, Cena wasn't there the next night after Money in the Bank. He's selling the injury that Kevin Owens caused after Cena went over Owens because the company and Cena are fucking idiots. So here comes Cena, eight days after Money in the Bank, acting like it's no big deal, like nothing fucking happened, running down the goddamn ramp like a jackass. It's just, just more of the same old shit. The epitome of the same old shit. It's the same John Cena promo that follows the same ebbs and flows with the same basic context with a paint-by-numbers word change here and there, and that's about fucking it. It's always the same shit with this asshole. And the whole time, this whole segment felt like one colossal waste of time, even once Kevin Owens fucking got out there. Because we're beating around the bush to get to the point of what everybody knew was already going to fucking happen anyways. That these two were going to face off for the U.S. fucking title. And somewhere along the way it become a, came a battle of who could speak better French. And apparently John Cena could speak Cantonese or whatever the fuck. This is what they're booking for perhaps their most interesting story they have right now. You've got Kevin Owens speaking French, and of course John Cena can't sit there and let that go. He's got to speak French and other fucking languages, too. Next week, John Cena raps in Swahili. Fuck off. And then, of course, because for some reason, this company just has to do it. I actually believe that buzz and rumor mill that was going around out there about how Vince doesn't like the thought of Lana with Rusev, and he's trying to fuck with them, and he's trying to break them up. Seeing what they're doing with them on television, I believe it. There's just no reason for them to be sitting there and doing this shit with Dolph Ziggler and Lana. There's absolutely none. And then to sit there and do that shit with Adam Rose and Rosa Mendez. You know, you had Adam Rose being featured nicely on that E60 piece, so this is how the fuck you feature him on. It's just so stupid on so many different fucking levels. And then all the while, this guy in Rusev that you made to be so dominant and so monstrous over the course of a year plus... 
you're now making look like such a whiny, pathetic, incompetent, impotent bitch. And isn't Summer Ray fucking with Dolph? So what the fuck? This is the whole thing. You put a woman with Dolph Ziggler, it doesn't help Dolph Ziggler. It just doesn't. Everybody else except Dolph Ziggler becomes a fucking focus. And all the while, I don't like what they're doing with Rusev. They should have just written him fucking off of TV. That would have been the wise thing to do. But no, they just can't fucking do that. Because ultimately, there's going to be no real payoff to this. There's going to be no real point or purpose to this. Just as it is with so many things involving WWE's product today. And then, of course, we get to the major story of the night which is that Brock Lesnar is indeed going to be facing Seth Rollins at the next pay-per-view at Battleground. So now Seth Rollins is trying to backtrack, and he's trying to rally the troops and get the authority behind him and all this other boring bullshit. So we get to the main event segment, and with the help of Kane and J&J &J security, Seth Rollins is able to beat down Brock Lesnar and leave him laying in the middle of the ring to close the show. Now, I understand that you've got to build up Seth Rollins some, because God knows the WWE hasn't done a good job of building him up once they made him the champion, and he definitely lacks in the credibility department. So you've got to put a little chink in the Brock Lesnar armor, as much of a monster as you made him out to fucking be, for anybody to take that match between him and Seth Rollins seriously. Because otherwise you have no choice but to have Seth Rollins go over Brock Lesnar at Battleground or have Sheamus cash in and completely avoid it if you don't do something. Because otherwise people are going to view this as so predictable and nobody's going to want to fucking watch. But let me get this straight. A guy like Roman Reigns can roll through the entire authority. A Dean Ambrose can roll through the entire authority. But the guy who's a former multiple-time world champion, the guy who's a former UFC heavyweight champion, the guy that dismantled The Undertaker and ended his streak at WrestleMania 30, the guy who destroyed John Cena like nobody ever truly has at SummerSlam, this same guy, can't sit there and contend with Seth Rollins, two midgets in Mercury and Noble, and freaking over the hill Kane. And this was so stupid because you could have tied in other things to this. For some reason, you had Ambrose and Kane wrestle this week for God knows whatever fuck reason. So if they're, you're trying to develop a little mini feud there, how about you really get some popularity for Ambrose? How about you really you know, help cement Brock Lesnar's status as a babyface, which he's already had the second that he dismantled John Cena so much at SummerSlam last year? Why don't you sit there and have Ambrose run out? Maybe what you know, maybe you don't have Reigns run out because of the shit with Wyatt, because of how fucking stupid that is. But have Ambrose fucking run out. Have him try to make the save. What the fuck would be wrong with that? That would make compelling, interesting television. That way these guys still get a little bit over on Lesnar, but all the while somebody has actually fucking bothered enough interweaving different storylines and doing a bunch of shit that this company doesn't have the brains to fucking do. This finish was stupid. These little mini-stories that they tell with Seth Rollins throughout the course of the night, I know some of you are going to like it because you like Seth Rollins, and some of you are going to like it just the fuck because. But this shit is stupid. This show is boring, dumb, and stupid. Oh, God, Christ almighty. It was bad. No wonder WrestleMania 32 is going to have to be part-time mania. Because God knows you're not going to get much out of the current product and the current roster. And that's all thanks to the WWE and the creative dumb dicks. Oh, and apparently Triple H was in charge of this week's Raw. <laughs> oh, that means good things for the future of this fucking show.